asking two members of the party there. Two thirds of them voted in favour of the coalition. But how enthusiastic is that support? What's the reaction been there? Well, of course, we heard Olaf Scholz of the Social Democrats speaking on the stage behind me to the press, saying that he was very pleased with this result. But behind the scenes, Kevin Kunert, who is the young man who's been uh, leading the No Grow Co or No Grand Coalition campaign around the country in recent weeks, spoke of his disappointment, saying that he still believes that this coalition agreement between the Conservatives and the Social Democrats is ultimately some sort of fudged compromise. And that seemed to be echoed by the members of the Social Democrats that I spoke to here today. One woman told me that she was very disappointed that her party hadn't voted no and uh, really been brave enough to go back into opposition and to start a renewal process from scratch and return to its roots, so to speak. But there are a lot of happy faces here at the Social Democrats today. Um, a, a few people told me that they were very happy with this coalition agreement, that a lot of the policies that it includes are ones that have been hard won by the Social Democrats. So they believe that this time around, a grand coalition government uh, would be different, that the Social Democrats wouldn't ultimately just be swallowed up by their uh, coalition partners, the Conservatives. Um, and then one man um, who I asked just shrugged and said, well, this result is better than the alternative, because, of course, the alternative would have likely been new elections, which probably would have punished the Social Democrats in the polls and, of course, just led to a greater period of political instability. And Jessica, these two parties have, of course, governed together for the last four years. Are we looking at, at a return to business as usual, so to speak, once the coalition is back up and running? Well, uh, this coalition agreement does include a lot of, of social policies. It does, as, as Martin Schulz, the former head of the party, says, include a lot of the social democratic um, handwriting, especially on social issues. And the social democrats are calling for this next government to put their hands in their pockets and spend a, a lot more, which is not something we typically known from uh, the Merkel era, uh, era of conservative-led politics here. So in that sense, it will be different. We also know there's going to be a, a huge emphasis on uh, Europe and European politics over the next four years. And uh, we do know that there's going to be a, a, a shake-up, certainly, to the Conservative uh, top jobs. Um, as, as Angela Merkel announced last week, we don't yet know who's going to be taking the top minister jobs for the Social Democrats. But certainly there will be a new dynamic and new faces in both parties. And they face a new opposition in Parliament because, of course, the Parliament is bloated now with two new parties, uh, two new opposition parties, the Liberal Party and the far-right wing AFD, both which are going to be very vocal opponents over the next four years. So certainly new, new challenges challenges for uh, this next government. But uh, of course, these are parties that have worked together very well and will have a broad majority in the parliament as a government. So that will certainly make their life a bit easier. Okay, thanks, Jessica, for joining us. That's